Yeah. Look like we need a tour job, Mr. Saperstein. How many miles? About 12. Oh, great. We're 15 minutes to make it. We might get out with a push. Come on, everybody. Hey, Jim. Are you sure you got the brake off? Sure, the brake's off. How many miles to go, Eve? Twelve. Come on, let's push again, fellas. Ah. Now how many miles to go, Eve? Come on, now let's rock it. We can get it out, boys. Come on. Rock! 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 I hear this now, everybody. We're late already for this date. To save time, let's change now and be ready to go right on as soon as we get there. All right, Jim, let's make time. Hey! Oh, you had me worried crazy. Sorry we're late, Phil. The joint's been sold out for three weeks. I saw myself refunding $14,000. <laughs> well, take it easy. We're ready to go right on. You are? Yeah, sure. Come on, fellas. Hurry up. On the run. Now, you just go start the music. What do you mean? Go start the music. Come on. Okay. Here is the starting lineup again quickly for the Globetrotters. It's Tatum, Washington, Haynes, Cumberland, and Gates. Okay, men, these fellas shouldn't be too tough. How's the stomach, Duke? It's okay. Any questions? Say, hey. Yes? Have you always had such beautiful blue eyes? <laughs> <laughs> Let's play ball. The Starkton team is coming out of its huddle, and we're about to start now. The players are in position, and the tap goes to Captain Babe Presley of the Globetrotters. This is Stockton's first opportunity this year to see the fabulous Globetrotters in action. They pass that ball around with blinding speed. And Irma Robinson drives in for a score. Now Stockton works the ball back. O'Neill gets it. And he scores with a one-hander from the outside. But no one in this capacity crowd is kidding himself about the outcome of this game. The Trotters work the ball inside. Mark Haynes, the great dribbler, races O'Neill for a loose ball. Haynes gets it. He passes out of the bucket, and Goose Tatum has it. And Goose Tatum scores on one of his famous hook shots, putting the Globe Trotters ahead again, four to two. Starkson takes the ball and crosses the... Whoops! Washington steals it away. And the Trotters head for the Stockton basket again. And the Trotters are making that old ball work for him tonight. It goes to Mark Haynes. And he scores! The Trotters look awfully fast for this early in the season. Tonight's final score will be just as high as the Trotters want it to be. 
This game is a tune-up for what promises to be another great season. Hey, Chris, quickly, fellas. The bus leaves in 30 minutes. Come in the office, Abe. I'll give you a check. Thanks. Have a seat. No, no, no. Take my chair. It's more comfortable. You must right. be tired after that long trip. Have a cigar. Don't smoke, Phil. I won't take it anyway. Some crowd, huh? We drew them in for 50 miles around. Yeah, not bad. Say, so you gotta give me another date this season. Two more and I can pay off the mortgage. I'm sorry, Phil. We're booked solid. Well, how about the Celtic series? You could play one of those games here. Let's be realistic, Phil. You seat 7,000. 7,100. All right, 7,100. The first two Celtic games we play at the Chicago Stadium, capacity 23,000. The last game we play in New York at Madison Square Garden, capacity 21,000. Oh, hi, McClary. Abe, this is Bill McClary, coach of the local college team. Abe Saperstein. I'll check these figures. Just wanted to tell you that's a great outfit you got, Saperstein. Oh, nice of you to say so. By the way, I've got a kid you ought to keep your eye on. Billy Townsend. All-American last season in his sophomore year. Yeah, I've seen the kid. He's good prospect for pro ball. I just hope nobody gets over anxious. Why, what do you mean? Townsend's got two years of school left, and he ought to get the chance to graduate. But the way professional teams are stealing kids off of campuses these days, well, it's a pretty rotten practice, don't you think? Listen, McClary, I'm not interested in the kid just now, so relax. But what about you? Are you sure you're just interested in the kid's education? Or shall we let our hair down and as a couple of coaches admit that we're both interested in good players? I'll take a matinee, Abe. I could set up an afternoon oh, game Phil, anytime. Hi, coach. Hi. Hi. Mr. Saperstein? Yeah. My name's Townsend. Billy Townsend. Glad to know you, Townsend. What can I do for you? It's what I can do for you, Mr. Saperstein. If the price is right, I'm available for the trotters this season. Well, what makes you think I need you? Do you want to beat the Celtics? You can do it? Well, the Celtics are a lot stronger this year. You'll need help. I figure I can be the difference to you. The difference between win or lose. What do you say? Look, Townsend, I'm glad to have met you, but I'm in a hurry. Hear this now. You're still a young boy. Do yourself a favor. Go back to school. Finish up. Then we'll talk, okay? Meanwhile, we'll try to get along as best we can without you. Phil, I gotta go help the boys pack. Abe, I'll even take a morning game. Hear this now, hear this. Let's see some drive tonight. Whip that ball around. Goose, you're stabbing blind on the pivot. Ted, when you cut for the basket, cut sharp, move. Three weeks from tonight in Chicago Stadium, you start the toughest series of the year, and I promise you the Celtics will be there. Now, let's play basketball. Come on, babe. Make them work tonight. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You hit it right on the nose, Mr. Saperstein. I noticed the same thing last night. Team was a little ragged. What are you doing here? Offering my athletic body to the Globetrotters. Well, you take your athletic body right back where it came from. Did I tell you to see me after you finish school? I'm finished. You quit. That's one mistake. I'm a big boy, Abe. I know what I'm doing. I left and I'm not going back. So? Well, an hour ago, I phoned Dave Barrett, the New York Rams. He offered me a job. I told him I'd let him know. So? It's either the Rams or the Trotters. Personally, I prefer the Trotters. Can you tell me why we're so lucky? It's simple. You pay the highest salaries in the business. I've been playing college ball to build up my character. Well, I'm loaded with character. I want to start building up my bank account. Game time. It's game time. Well, yes or no? You got a job. Come on and watch this one from the bench. Oh, I can't tonight, Abe. I have to go back to school and say goodbye to a few people. Well, how are you fixed for Wednesday? Oh, Wednesday's fine, fine. See us in Detroit, practice session in the morning. You got your bags here with you? Oh, no. Already shipping to Detroit. Morning, Bill. Oh, hello, Professor. I wondered if you'd have time to correct some freshman exam papers for me. I'm sorry, Dr. Lindley. I won't be able to. You see, I'm leaving. Leaving? I'm not transferring somewhere. Oh, no, sir. I'm going to play professional basketball. Sort of hang out the books for a while. Well, why, Bill? Some immediate financial problem? No, not exactly. Well, haven't you an athletic scholarship? Yes, sir, but... Well, then, what is it? 
This is a chance for money, Professor. Money right now, big money. Sure, I have an athletic scholarship, but if something happened to me when I got hurt, well, I'd have to leave school anyway. This way, when I come back, I won't need a scholarship. I'll be able to pay my own bills, be able to do whatever I want to. I see. But aren't you afraid of getting detoured? I, I mean, on the way back here? Me? Not a chance. You could easily have a fine career in this field. <laughs> it was so exciting to me to, to watch a student like you come along. I'll be back. And meanwhile, thanks for everything, Dr. Lemley. <laughs> Best of luck, Bill. Very few people are able to work out their lives as neatly and comfortably as you're planning yours. I hope you're one of the lucky ones. Goodbye, Bill. How many of us ever get a chance like that? 600 a month to start, 600 a month in all expenses. Sounds wonderful. Oh, but that's nothing. I figure after the first few practices, I ought to make the first team. And the regulars, they make a whole lot more. Well, it would give you a chance to help your kid sister, Billy. Yeah, it'd be nice to do something for her. Well, I guess I'd better get back to the restaurant. Aren't you coming to the train? No, I can't. I'd be late for work. I'd better say goodbye now. Be a big success, Billy. Here? Hey, you sound like you don't mean that. What's wrong? Oh, nothing. This has been one big happy day for me. You're giving up school and leaving town. Oh, for five or six years, maybe. But you'll be back someday. It's simple. Oh, cut it out, Anne. The team will be coming through all the time. And we'll be writing. We'll keep in touch. Sure. So what's all the fuss about? Oh, I don't know. You do everything so easily, Billy. If it's chemistry, you're at the top of the class. If it's basketball, you're all American. If it's me, I guess if you happen to feel like it, someday you'll get around to that, too. You're crazy. The only thing that worries me is leaving you. Don't be funny. You're so darn sure of me that I could... My worries are over. Over here, everybody. Well, nice looking bunch of boys, eh? Oh, they're all right. Fellas, we're in luck. We got a college man joining us. Gee. <laughs> what a break for us. Yes, sir. The squad's beginning to get some class. He's not only a college man, he's all American. Meet Billy Townsend. Guys, an all American. <laughs> Wait a minute, fellas. Duke Cumberland. How are you, Billy? Goose Tatum. Marcus Haynes. What do you say, Bill? Clarence Wilson. Irma Robinson. Hi. Pop Gates. Hello, kid. Frank Washington. Babe Presley. I know you, Billy. Ted Strong. How you doing? Inman Jackson. How you doing, Billy? Okay, fellas. Billy here tells me it might take him three or four days to get out of the field of our game, so let's get right to work. Defense first. Marcus, go down for a score. Billy, you get the ball. Sure. Hey, 
Hear this. Jack Davidson's going to do an article about the team. He'd like to talk to you. He'll be grateful for any cooperation. Okay, Jack, the bus is yours. Thanks, Abe. And where'd you go to college, Mark? Langston, one of Oklahoma's leading universities. What'd you study? Industrial arts, cabinet making, furniture making, and stuff like that. Expect to do anything with it someday? Well, someday. After all, this is a young man's game. You mentioned your wife works. Doing what, exactly? She teaches third grade in my hometown, Sand Springs, Oklahoma. Has her hands full, too. How come? Keeping the kids at their books. Seems that all they want to know about is the trotters. <laughs> Fourteen years with the team, Tatum. How do your legs stand it? Oh, I haven't used my legs in years. Just my hands. <laughs> I see what you mean. What about school, Tatum? Where'd you go? Got most of my education traveling in this bus. We've played Canada, Cuba, Mexico, the Hawaiian Islands, all over Europe and Africa. My best subject's geography. Are you married, Tatum? Mm-hmm. Any children? Two. Marjorie Ann and Goose Tatum, Jr. Say, I happen to have a couple snapshots here. Want to see what they look like? Is this all you have? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I suppose everybody asks you this, Billy, but how do you think a top-flight college team like the one you played with would do against the Globetrotters? Well, I used to think they'd do pretty well when I was in college. Isn't the pro game similar at all to college ball? Oh, sure. They both use a ball, a basket, and a court. How about all this bouncing around the country? Does it get you down? No, not me. I get plenty of rest sitting on the bench. Well, I see you've been breaking in the game lately. With a little more experience, you'll be giving the regulars a run for their money. You might put that another way. When you get to be a regular, you're running around for a lot more money. Thanks, Billy. Well, did you get enough material, Jack? Enough for my magazine piece and a couple of radio broadcasts. Say, tell me, Abe, where do you keep digging up these great players year after year? Oh, from our alumni. Guys who played with us 10, 15 years ago, they still keep an interest in the team. Nowadays, some of them are insurance salesmen, maybe firemen, own small businesses. They send me recruits from all over the country. How about this clowning? How did that start? Oh, that goes way back to the days when we were playing dance halls at $5 a night, seven nights a week, and traveling. A man can get tired, huh? You're not kidding. So we decided to let the ball do the running for us. Trick stuff, instead of sheer physical effort. Turned out to be fun for us, as well as the crowds. So now it's become a part of us. A wonderful part, too. Say, how about Townsend here? Think he'll get into the Celtic game tonight? Oh, he might see a little action. How do you feel, Billy? You all set? I feel pretty good. Bang my knee up a little in practice. Take it easy, son. That's enough talk for now. What? The condition of any man on this team isn't anybody's business but ours. That's all right, Duke. Jack's okay. Say, so what is all this about? Bear this in mind for the future, kid. There's no harm done now, but any information the opposition can get about us, they'll use. So before a big game like tonight's, we stick together. We don't talk to anybody. So, in Chicago today, the talk is basketball and nothing else. Who do you like? The New York Celtics or the Harlem Globetrotters? 
I doubt if you could find more sports excitement in this town if the Chicago White Sox, after a drought of 30 years, won the American League pennant. The Trotters bring into Chicago Stadium tonight the greatest basketball record, white or Negro, in the history of the sport. Over a period of 24 years, they've won almost 3,500 games while losing a bare 200. And they take that record seriously, playing to win every time. Traveling together through the backwoods of America, they've become a family. A family whose name is synonymous with champion. Every sport over the years has developed teams that acquire the class and the indefinable something that, that spells tradition. Well, in basketball, it's the Trotters. Watch them play. You'll see what I mean. It's a way champions have of, of wearing their crowns. Now a note on the economic aspect of tonight's game. Meaning again, uh, who do you like? Well, the smart money likes the Celtics by five points. For you newcomers to the sports world, that means if you bet on them, you give the other fellow, the Globetrotters, and five automatic points. Well, maybe the wagering fraternity is right. The Celtics have some sensational new kids, and of course the Trotters are a year older. But from this corner, I would say a coin or two bet on the Trotters is the bargain of the week. Well, that's the three-o mark for now, and this is Shut Jack off, Davis Rocky. saying so long. I don't like it. What's the matter, Eddie? You gonna let Davidson touch you off the Celtics? Davidson is no fool. He may have something. And for thirty thousand, uh, I don't like the Celtics that much. It'd be different if we had some information. Where am I going to get information? Following the Trotters in a trailer? Bet me thirty thousand on the Globe Trotters, Marty. That'll even me up. All right. Tonight, I'm just a spectator. And the fans are still pouring into this huge Chicago stadium. The Celtics are taking their warm-up. They look like a rugged... Wait a minute. Here come the Gold Trotters. Listen to that hand. at the trotters, as usual, but now the boys are getting ready to settle down for the business of the evening. Use a man-to-man -man on defense. If anyone gets hot, double-team him. Don't press too hard. you got lots of time. Good luck. This is a big one, fellas. Let's go. Well, this ought to be interesting. Celtics win the tap and hit for the Trotters goal. Trotters on defense. They almost intercept, but Lavelli gets the ball and scores. And the Celtics have drawn first blood. Trotters move the ball down now. They look for an opening. And it's Hop Gates on the drive. And... Washington grabs the rebound. Dribbling down the floor now, Marcus Haynes with the ball. Season opening, races all the way, and the Trotters go ahead for the first time tonight. Brother, when that Haynes moves, he moves. The Celtics with the ball now, and matching speed with speed. Barnhorst a screening for Sebastian, who flips and makes it. Robinson takes the ball across the center line. Passes off to Pop Gates, and it is set shot for set shot. It's good. Both teams can hit from outside and inside, and how do you defend against it? I'll let the coach figure that one out. Baker pushes it in from the corner, and it's all tied up again. Six and six. Trotter's in possession of the ball now. 
They go into a weave, passing from side to side, and looking for an opening, trying to spot Tatum in there on the key spot. It's flipped in by Haynes. Ball goes to Tatum, and he sinks the laziest over the head. Roll shots you ever saw. Paris, come here. You go catch Pops. Try for some corner shots. Friends, if you can find two more evenly matched teams than these two, then my name isn't Sam Balter. Wilson uh, replacing Gates now. And when the Trotters make a substitution this early in the game, it means that Saperstein must have spotted a weakness. Wilson moves into the corner, shoots, makes it. Both teams are really sharp, but the Celtics have better replacements. That may be a factor if the game continues at this pace. Pouring in strong substitutes have been slowly creeping ahead, and there doesn't seem much that the Trotters can do about it. Billy, Irma's tiring out. Go get him. Okay. Gee, a tough spot for the kid. There's a whistle, and we have a Trotter substitution. Oh, here's a face we haven't seen before this evening. Billy Townsend, Trotter rookie, replacing Robinson. Townsend has never started a pro game, but I guess Saperstein knows what he's doing. Townsend sets, shoots. Hey, how about that? Celtics come down, and Tony Lavelli, ex-Yale captain, in on the pivot and tries a shot. Washington snares the rebound. Trotters move down the court with Haynes dribbling. Townsend sets again, cuts for the basket, and throws it in. The kid is sensational. Johnson may be a rookie, but he's certainly learning fast. Ball hits the rim, bounds off, and Townsend goes up for the rebound. He and Wilson coming up the court now. Townsend and Wilson. Townsend moving in and scores. Seven points ought to be enough if we don't get... And Lavelli scores on a pivot shot. The Trotters lead by five, a little more than a minute uh, remaining. Hahn grabs the uh, rebound. The Baker feeds off to Lavelli, and Tony driving in, drops it through from the left side. Now the Trotters lead by three, and the Celtics press hard for that ball. They get it and race down court, trying to beat the clock. Ball moves out now to Sebastian. He sets, shoots, swish, it's good. Celtics trail by only one point with only 30 seconds left to play. Let's keep it, lock it up. It's a freeze it. Trotters go into a weave in order to freeze the ball for the remaining seconds of the game. They pass it from one to the other, letting that time run out. They won't shoot or make a bad pass because if the Celtics get the ball, they still have a chance to go down and score. If they could do that, they could win the game. But you can almost say that this one is as good as over. No team coached by Abe Saperstein would ever permit that to happen. Wait a minute. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. What a time to sink on. Nice game, kid. What do you mean, nice game? He was lucky. He said this league was tough. Did you shoot that ball, Gage? Now, hear this, Townsend. When I signal a freeze, no one shoots. Understand that, no one. I made the shot, didn't I? You looked awful worried about that one-point lead, Abe. I thought I'd let you enjoy the game. What if you missed? We were lucky. The Celtics would get the ball, they've got 15 seconds, they make a basket, and we lose the game. That last shot will get you the headlines, kid. It'll also get you a $50 fine. Tough break, kid, but you deserve it. 
seen you play. You got plenty of class. Good going, Townsend. You're sure some player, boy. You're gonna have a great future with the truck. Hey, Billy. Did you read what this fella John Carmichael said about you in the Chicago Daily News? Well, he says you're the greatest player he ever saw. <laughs> oh, quit it, will you, Wash? Mr. Townsend, will you speak a few words to our radio audience? Speak right into the mic, please. Ladies and gentlemen, all I can say is... Thanks very much. <laughs> Are there any questions for Mr. Townsend from our studio audience? Mr. Townsend, sir, when you play basketball, do you find that the other four men on your team are just getting in your way? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Townsend, I was thrilled to death by that shot you made last night against the Celtics. Will you show me how you do that shot? <laughs> well, folks, that's what I call my reckless shot. What I mean is, when I got $50 I'm not happy with... $50 will buy a lot of steaks. Let's have a party tonight on Mr. Townsend. <laughs> <laughs> Hear this now, hear this. Starting lineup tonight. Tatum, Haynes, Robinson, Presley, and Townsend. Okay, hit the floor, boys. All right, let's go, let's go, man. Let's go man. On the level, Abe. Restarting? Sure, why not? I thought you were sorting me. You know about the Celtic game. I was sore. And for your information, the men you play with were sore, too. But I make a practice of starting the best five men I've got. Good luck, kid. Hey, Abe. Starters pay? Better than that. In your case, 1200 a month. I think you rate it. Distance? I would like to have Stockton. Two, three, four, oh, please. Thanks, Betsy. Hello. Hello. It's me, honey. How are you? Billy. Well, how are you? Fine. Did you get the mail I sent you? You mean that long postcard about ten days ago? Well, you know how it is, honey. I've been very busy. Playing every night, traveling all day in the bus. Say, listen, I got that raise. Starters pay. I told you it wouldn't take long. Yes, you did. You certainly did. Say, listen, we'll be in Chicago for the second Celtic game. Ten days from tonight. I want you to come and see the game. Come to Chicago? But, Billy, I'm working. Then you gotta quit working, honey. For a couple of days. You got to come. I want to see you. If you're getting starters pay, the least you can do is start. Come on! Hey, look, Ann, I've got to run. I'm sending you a train ticket and telling you when to come. I'll be waiting for you. Goodbye, honey. Wildcats would love to knock off the Globetrotters and grab the headlines. They're playing hard and a little rough. They haven't got a chance tonight. Townsend passes to Gates and old brother waltz me around again, Willie. That's the wrong technique against the Trotters. They might lose their tempers. These local boys are getting rougher and the referee's been looking the other way every time. Townsend, the game's high scorer, has been getting the brunt of the dirty Wildcat play. And wow, look at that football block. And the crowd doesn't like it. Wait a minute. Townsend's hurt. It's the fifth time he's been fouled in the game, and this time he's really hurt. Presley and Tatum help him to his feet. And the referee calls timeout with a score tied 14 off. Pretty rough, huh? How's it feel, kid? It'll be hard. He just needs a little rest. Duke, take him to the locker room. Get a whirlpool bath and rub. These local boys want to play rough, Goose. Let's make the game interesting. Okay. Time in again, and the game resumes without Townsend. The Goose sets, aims, shoots. Oops! That time Goose fooled even his own teammates. He aims again, and that's using your head, Goose. 
The Trotters are getting their revenge by digging into their bag of tricks. Now the Goose is making fools of the Wildcats, passing between their legs. Bongo on the hit that time. Hey, Goose, look where you're shooting. The Trotters bring the ball over the center line, getting set here for another offensive play. And Gates passes to Haynes, and he starts to dribble. Looks like he's on his way toward the basket. He goes into the basket, goes right on past it, doesn't even shoot. Oh, brother, Haynes is really dribbling, and we're in for a treat tonight. The Wildcats may not enjoy what's coming, but they asked for it. And look at that man dribble. He's running the Wildcats dizzy. They can't even touch him. The whole arena's going wild, and the Wildcats are dropping like flies. There's one down, two down, three down, fourth down, and goal to go. <laughs> Believe me, folks, that's what I call wiping up the floor with the opposition. And now the Trotters are pouring it on. Basket, basket, basket. To keep up with this game, you need an adding machine instead of a scoreboard. Haynes scores. Tatum scores. Gates scores. Robinson, Cumberland. I wouldn't be surprised if Saperstein scored. Ball goes into the corner. Back in again to Tatum, but the Goose can't shoot. He's blocked. I saw it, folks, but I don't believe it. The Wildcats take the ball down, and the Trotters steal it away. Gates throws a long pass down the court. Come on, Wildcats. The poor Wildcats can't do anything right anymore. The Trotters come down again, and it looks like they're lining up in a T formation. Yeah, Mark Haynes is calling signals. They shift into an unbalanced line to the right. The ball goes back to Haynes, and he tries for a field goal. The ball goes up, and it's good. Ow. Uh, Mr. Townsend? Yeah, that's enough, Danny. Oh. My name is Turner. Professor Turner from Baltimore State College. Glad to meet you, Professor. Something I can do for you? No, I'm just curious to see you. I've heard some pretty remarkable things about you. And since the Globetrotters are in town... Thanks, Professor. Are you a basketball fan? Well, of a sort. But the things I'd heard about you had nothing to do with basketball. I was up to Cambridge last week to hear some papers read at Harvard and ran into an old teacher of yours, Dr. Lindley. Oh, sure. How is he? Fine, fine. Dr. Lindley's a wonderful man. Taught me everything I ever learned about chemistry. Well, he claims that you learned practically everything he knew and in only two years. How's it feel, Billy? Abe, this is Professor Turner of Baltimore State, Mr. Saperstein. Well, how do you do? How do you do? Well, I'll run along. Oh, and incidentally, if you have time, drop up at the college and let me show you around. Thanks, Professor. Quite a boy you've got here. Combines pivot shots in basketball with honor work in chemistry. Oh, well, goodbye. Goodbye. Baltimore State, a real jerkwater school. Are you kidding? It's a fine Negro college. So what? It's still a jerkwater school. My leg feels okay, Abe. Well, you keep off it for a couple of days. I want it in top shape for Chicago. You never told me you were an honest student. You never asked me. Here it is now, fellas. Jim figures this detour will bring us into Chicago a couple of hours late, so now hear the schedule. We'll have a light meal at my house, and I mean light. It'll be too late for anything heavy. It'll be a little while before game time, but I want you all to go back to the hotel, lie down, take a nap. It's been a rough trip. I want you all off your feet. Is that clear? Good. Has everybody got that? Yeah. Speaking for myself, Eve, I always sleep better after a heavy meal. <laughs> <laughs> Taxi 
Aren't you Billy Townsend of the Trotters? Well, uh, how does the game look for tonight, champ? It'll be a ball game. You mean if Duke Cumberland holds up? I hear he's got stomach trouble. I'm sorry. I just happen to look like Billy Townsend. Don't kid me. Follow that cat. Say, aren't you the girl who works in the campus beanery? I used to. I hope I've still got my job when I get back. Hello, Billy. Hello, Ann. Look, honey, I have to get right back to the hotel. Come on, we have one hour to get married. <laughs> oh, Billy. What's so funny? <laughs> you. The way you've decided all of this. I'm sorry, Billy, but this is one thing you just can't do all by yourself. You mean you don't want to? I really don't know. Listen, Ann, lately on the road, I've been looking up into the crowds. Something was missing. I didn't know what. Then it hit me. Back at the school, you were always around. Up in the stands, remember? And with the money I'm making, we can start up a property in New York. And my kid sister can come stay with you while I'm away, keep you company. What do you say, Ann? Well, let me catch my breath. You got around to me awful fast. All right, a guy with a lot of faults is asking you to marry him. Hey, you wouldn't want to marry anyone perfect anyway. You'd get lazy. Come on. By the authority vested in me by the state of Illinois, I join in holy matrimony Ann Carpenter and William Townsend. Better use the side entrance to the hotel, darling. Whole goose is probably still sleeping. Hurry, Bill. I'll meet you right after the game. All right. Oh, wait, where am I going? Oh, the Bayshore Hotel. There's a room there under the name of Mrs. Bill Townsend. for this second clash between the Trotters and Celtics, the Trotters are strong favorites, and rightly so. Since whipping the Celtics in their first meeting, the team has been greatly strengthened by the sensational play of young Billy Townsend. Averaging 30 points a game, Townsend's ball handling and blinding speed has really sparked the Trotters in the new season. Believe me, Eddie, when that guy left the hotel, he was gimpy. Gimpy as a duck. I don't know, they may tape him up or something. But I'll lay you 100 to 1, he don't finish the game. Marty, spread 50,000 around on the Celtics. Try Las Vegas first. What hotel are the Celtics at? The Watkins. Get over there. See if you can get the word dropped that Townsend is shaky. Go long distance? Could you get me the Carlisle Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, please? The Trotters, of course, are strong favorites, but it might be in order to point out the Celtics, too, have been undefeated since that last game here at the Chicago Stadium. The fans are pouring in to make this second game in basketball's World Series another sellout house, because when these two teams meet, it's rock'em, sock'em, and get out of the way, basketball. Hey, Rook! What did you leave the warm-up for? You okay? Sure. A bandage you haven't used it in a week. Did the knee slip? Oh, no, no, Abe. I just thought I'd wear it tonight, you know, to make sure. Well, all right. Brush it up, kid. Good, and the Trotters lead the five. 
everything they've tried has worked, and the Celtics' faces are grim. They work the ball inside. A shot is wide, and Lavelli throws it up again, and that's good. Gates takes the ball up and passes to Townsend. Lavelli feeds it back and screens while Pop sets, shoots, and good. And the Trotters lead by five again. Celtics take the ball up. Barnhorst trying one. No good. Former Notre Dame All-American tries another. No good. Townsend gets the rebound. And the Trotters move back into scoring position. Haynes with the ball. Passing in now to Tatum. Goose. Is there anyone else in the game who can make a basketball do the things that he can? But the Celtics are sure giving Townsend a rough time. Double and triple timing him. Wonder what they have against Billy. That goes the goose again, and Mark Haynes follows suit with a spinning bounce pass. The Trotters are certainly relaxed tonight and enjoying themselves, but it's hard to tell whether they're going for laps or if they're fooling around deliberately to throw their opponents off stride. Now, Goose uh, getting set once again, stops the comedy and tries a shot, and it's in there. Celtics take the ball and move it around outside. Norm Baker is giving Townsend a workout now. He looks a bit Townsend slow tonight. To the other. On with the ball, Tatum on him. Sebastian tries a long one. Good, the Trotters now lead by five. Tries a hook shot. No good. Goose gets it. That's good. Barnhorst and Lavelli work the ball up the court for the Celtics. Ball goes to Woolsey. Jumps. Shoots. Good. Trotters come right back. Haynes dribbles right down the middle. Tries a jump shot and switch. There it is. And the Trotters lead by seven again. Screens for Woolsey, who sets, shoots. Good. And the Celtics widen their lead. With two minutes left to play, the Celtics are ahead by five points. And the Trotters are having a tough time chopping down that lead. Ball goes zipping around from one Trotter to another. Each man looking for an opening. Tatum passes out to Wilson. He shoots. No good. Thompson bats in the rebound. But the Celtics really race back now on a fast break. Woolsey tries a shot. It misses. Lavelli gets the rebound, throws it in. The Celtics lead by five again with 53 seconds left to play. If the Trotters are going to win this one, they'd better get hot right now. There's a whistle on the play. Foul is against Woolsey. Pushing. Tatum shooting for one shot. Tatum sets. He shoots. No good. It's a scramble for the ball. It's loose. Marcus Haynes comes up with it. It's good. Lavelli shoots and misses. And Robinson snares the rebound. This is the first Trotter break in the past two minutes. They trail by three. Haynes shooting. It's wide. And the Trotters fight to maintain possession of the ball and stay in the game. Haynes races in. Pivots. And scores. And the Trotters now trail by only one. The Celtics go right back. Deliberately, they move the ball inside, and Big Han tries a hook. He follows it up. It's good. Haynes takes the ball over the line. He dribbles in, throws it up, and that's in there, too. The Celtics lead by one now. They work the ball in the basket. The ball goes up. No good. Tatum grabs the rebound. Haynes takes the ball up, passes to Cumberland. There's still time for one more goal. The Trotters are looking for a clean shot at the basket. This last one has to be good. The Celtics are guarding closely. Five seconds left to play. The ball goes to Townsend. He has a clean shot. He sets, aims, and throws the ball away. He did not take that shot. And the gun goes off, ending the game. Well, it wasn't a setup, but it sure looked as though the Trotters would have a chance on that one. It might have worked. We'll never know now. Well, we'll 
get him in the next one. That's the big game. Why didn't the All-American Wizard shoot? He had a setup. I should have taken the shot myself. Sure hate to lose that one. Come on, cheer up, fellas. Just another ball game. You toss a big fat cantaloupe through a hair net, and you get paid for it. You know, I bet we'll be able to pack Yankee Stadium for that next Celtic ball game. Shut up, Townsend. Hey, let me tell you something. My chemistry professor, he once worked three years on one experiment. Bust all his notes in the fire. Now, that's what I call a catastrophe. Listen, Townsend, I'm not going to be a chemist or anything. But ever since I was a kid, I wanted to wear this uniform, and so did every kid on the block. The Globetrotters were always the best. So when we lose, it isn't just another ball game. It is a catastrophe. Hang around, Billy. I want to talk to you. Please, Abe. You and the men forget, he's only a boy. Hello, Mrs. Harvestein. What's on your mind, Abe? I'll be with you in a minute, darling. Congratulations. What for? On getting married. Who, me? Well, maybe not, but a girl who calls herself Mrs. Townsend just gave me a message for you. She said she'd be waiting outside for you. Sneaked out of the hotel, eh? No, I couldn't get in a restaurant booth. He snores. Did you talk to anybody when you went out? Mm, the just other piece. He said, do you? And I said, I do. I don't mean that. I mean in the lobby or outside. What happened? Oh, I ran into a guy and he asked me about Duke. What'd you tell him? Nothing. You think I'm crazy? I brushed him off. Then where did you go? Picked up Ann and got married. You leave the warm-up to put on a bandage. And then later in the game, the Celtics run you silly from the time the whistle blows. Something must have happened. Think. Oh, I was... I was running back to the hotel. Bumped into a couple of guys and threw my knee out. Oh. I ducked right in the hotel. Nobody saw me. Nobody saw you. You were tailed from the minute you left the hotel. All right, you broke the rules. You sneaked out to get married. Maybe I'd have done the same thing myself. Let's forget that. But why didn't you tell me about the leg? All night long, I thought you were in a slump. I was waiting for you to snap out of it. I could have put in the replacement. But no, you don't tell me. Oh, come on, Dave. You sound like my college coach back at school. If you don't mind, my wife is waiting for me. Wait a minute. Billy. You don't understand how Tatum felt, do you? You don't know what Cumberland meant, do you? Well, after 24 years, I think I know what they meant. I think they meant that in some way this team represents more than themselves. It represents your people. I don't go for that business, Abe. It's tough enough for me alone, you know. I gotta worry about Bill Townsend. Well, all right. Drop around in the morning, Townsend, and I'll pay you off for the rest of the season. You join some other team if you like, go back to college, do anything you want. You're a great athlete, kid. But right now, you don't seem to fit in with professionals with men who could take to heart losing a stupid basketball game. Well, that's a deal, Dave. But if you don't want to go for it... Oh, sure, sure. I'd go for the deal, Billy. Come here. Now, what about this knee? You know, Saperstein's been around for a long time. If he thought you could get back into shape, would he let you go? He didn't let me go. I quit. All right, you quit. Do you mind if I have my doctor look you over? No, I don't mind. Oh, I'll take you to the best bone specialist in town. Whatever he says goes. It's good enough for me. All right, son. Pull your pants leg down. Well, what do you think, doctor? Well, knees are funny things. They like rest. Lots of rest. He's had an aggravated condition and overstrained it. But no strenuous exercise for four or five months, and he can be as good as new. You hear that, Billy? Now, there's no sense to pay a doctor not listen. Now, you lay strictly off till next season, and our deal is on. You got a deal. 
Professor Turner, is Baltimore State a men's college? Yes, Miss Townsend. We have an excellent Negro women's college nearby. I don't think Sarah's interested in anything nearby. Oh. <laughs> oh, Phil, it would be such fun. I gotta go now, but Anne, make him do it. Bye. Uh, Bye. Hey, what's all that about? Hello, Professor. Hello, Billy. How do you feel? Pretty good. I was very sorry to read about your injury. Well, those things happen, Professor. What are you doing in New York? Have a seat. Thanks. School business. Partially, I came to see you. Have you any plans right now, Billy? Oh, no, nothing special. It's taking it easy. How would you like to come down to Baltimore State? What would I do there? Assist in the chemistry department, Billy. They call Professor Lindley, and he says that you can very easily handle the elementary course. Me? I hesitated about even suggesting it to you, Billy. I realize our facilities hardly compare to what you're used to. You might even say we're something of a jerk water school. But I don't have to tell you why there's a shortage of competent Negroes in the chemistry field. We need you. So I decided to risk a refusal. I'm flattered, Professor. I'd like to do it. I should tell you at once, however. The pay is very small. Just living expenses and maybe... Oh, don't worry about that, Professor. I just signed a new basketball contract for three years. The only trouble is, I can only spend four or five months with you. Well, I understand that. But no matter how short the time, I feel that this will do a great deal for you too, Billy. Of course, the sooner you can get started, the better. I'll phone you in the morning, give you the details. Fine. Well, goodbye, Billy, and thanks. Bye, Professor. Goodbye, Bye. Mrs. Townsend. Goodbye, Professor. Thank you. What is this, Billy? I've just signed with the New York Rams a three-year contract for $40,000. The Rams? This is professional sports, Ann. You take the best job. And besides, the Rams don't travel as much as the Trotters. It'll be easier. And I'll be around home that much more. But what will the Globe Trotters think? Oh, they don't need me. They've got Goose and Marcus and Irma. They'll get along. They'll win ball games. I just wanted to know, uh, is the class going to meet Wednesday night? I imagine so. Why? I just wanted, sir. Thanks. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Professor. How's chemistry one coming along? It's in trouble. Oh? We've gotten in something over my head. Perhaps you better take the class over this Wednesday. Wednesday, you say? Yes, sir. Wednesday's a very difficult day for me, Bill. Tight schedule. Classes all morning and... Well, Wednesday's just a very bad day. Sure. I understand. We'll plow through it somehow. All right. Thanks, Professor. Indeed so. Uh, Mr. Townsend. Uh, I'm sorry, sir, but... Uh, I don't think I'll be able to make that class on Wednesday night. Is it all right? Sure, Higgins. Make it up next week. Thanks. I will. Will you be finished with that before dinner? We're going out right after. Yeah, I haven't got much to do. Hello. Hello. Is Sarah ready, Mrs. Townsend? She'll be ready in a minute. Have a seat, Frank. Thanks. Going up to the game Wednesday, Mr. Townsend? Wednesday? The Trotters Celtics game at Madison Square Garden. I thought you'd be driving up with Professor Turner. Turner? Oh, he drives up every year. With Professor Maxwell of the English Department and the Dean. Well, as a matter of fact, Frank, I have a class Wednesday night. Well, don't worry about that. There won't be any class. Half the campus is going up to New York. The other half will be at radio and television sets. Who do you think will win? Doesn't look good for the Trotters not with Duke Cumberland out the lineup. Yeah, I read that he had an appendicitis operation. And with you out besides, well, that's why I bet on the Celtics. Smart bet. Well, I don't want to win the bet. 
I want the Trotters to win. You know how it is. Sometimes when you want something to happen, you just pretend you don't. Stay frank. Ready. Well, see you later. Yeah, good night. Have fun. Good night. Why don't you go to the game, Bill? I've seen the Trotters play once or twice before. You could drive up to Professor Turner. I'm sure he'd have room for you. This whole college, Professor Turner, Maxwell, the dean, you'd think it was their team. Well, maybe it is. I'd like to go myself. Well, why don't you? And take my place in Turner's car. He's had a grudge against me ever since. No. No, Bill, you're wrong. After you signed with the Rams, I wrote Marcus Haynes' wife. And she told me the truth. It was the other men that didn't want to play with you. None of them. All right, they didn't want me. What can I do about it? Nothing you have to do right now, Bill. To be what I want you to be, you've just got to know and feel. I don't know how to tell you what it is. I don't... I don't know the words. But I think it means that just once in a while, you think of people outside of yourself. You know, nicer things than you ever expected might happen. Well, dinner's on the stove. I wish you'd hurry. Game time. Yeah, yeah, I know. So I don't think you have time to revolutionize the game of basketball. I just had an idea. If I put Clarence in Duke's spot, maybe I could... Uh... Come on, you ought to relax for a while. Let's see a movie or something. Hello, Mrs. Saverstein. Hello, Billy. Come in. Thanks. Hi, Abe. Well, what do you say, kid? How are you feeling? Oh, pretty fair. How's Duke? Well, he's all right. He'll be out of the hospital in a week. Oh, that's good. How's your wife, Billy? What are you doing with yourself? Oh, Ann's fine. I'm down at Baltimore State, fooling around those test tubes again. You know, Abe, giving the place some class. I just come up this afternoon to catch the ball game. Oh, swell. Have you got any tickets? No. Here, sit down. I'll call the box office and get your house seat. Oh, don't bother, Abe. No, there's no trouble. No. Abe, do you mind if I sit on the bench? Well, no, you can sit on the bench if you like. I mean in a uniform. Oh. I've been working out down the college, Abe. Had a doctor look me over. 
He already said I'm in pretty great shape. So I just thought, if you were in a spot and, and you needed to rest a prayer, perhaps you could use me. What do you say, Abe? Well, it's all right with me, kid, but I'm not the guy to talk to. You know where the boys are staying. Why don't you go down and talk to them? Maybe they'll want to lend you a uniform for tonight. If they do, you put it on. Well, tonight we wrap it up for the season, and this is the big one, the rubber game for the title. The Celtics are five-point favorites, but you can be sure that a few of the fans here in the garden will be rooting for the Trotters. Yes, a few. Injuries have hurt the Trotters, but there's a rumor around town that Billy Townsend may start tonight. This would be a surprise because word is that Billy signed to play for the Rams next season, on condition that he rests that knee in the meantime. Well, the Trotters will be sentimental favorites because of their fabulous record of wins. That record's at stake in every game, and they can be awfully tough in the big ones, like tonight. Remember, boys, All-American Towns in his back. When the whistle blows, get out of his way and let him go to work. <laughs> How you feel, kid? Okay, but feed to me one left, huh? Okay. Well, here it is. Billy Townsend is starting for the Trotters. That probably means he's tossing that Ram contract right out the window. The opening tap goes to Baker. He scores in the Celtics lead. Pop Gates and Mark Haynes take the ball over the center line. Woolsey moves in and steals it away. Moves down and shoots. Good. Two shots, two scores, and the Celtics lead four to nothing. Billy Townsend sets, fakes a shot, then passes the ball off. If Townsend's knee is giving him any trouble, it's hard to see from where we sit. Tatum breaks the ice. Beautiful pivot shot by the goose. The Celtics are working the ball into the hole. Uh, whoops. Frank Washington intercepts, and the Trotters come down on a fast break. Robinson sets, shoots, and swish. It's good, and the score is tied at 4-4. Four and four. Don't look for any long leads tonight, folks, because the players on both teams have their eyes on that basket. Carson trying to jump shot, and that's good. Townsend moving in on the give and go and tying it up on a beautiful play. Hold on to your hat, folks. This one is going right down to the wire. Big Bob Hahn throws in a one-handed jump shot. Both teams making every shot count. Townsend feeding the ball in now to Tatum at the uh, hole, and the goose drops it in. Tatum pounds a lot, but these baskets are no joke. The score is tied again at eight all. Celtics now possession of the ball, trying a long one from the outside. No good. Robinson moving out with the ball. Dribbling in close, but it's Schaefer stealing the ball away and racing up the court. Townsend guarding closely. And there's a whistle on the play. Foul against the Celtics. Townsend shooting one shot. Bounces the ball once. Takes aim and shoots. It's good. Celtics are having a hard time getting inside, but their set shots are working tonight. There's Sebastian getting set, and that's one in there, and the Trotters' lead disappears. The score is 10-9, the Celtics leading. Trotters are working the ball now, passing in and out of the bucket. Townsend seems to have all the speed that he showed in midseason, and that two-month layoff hasn't affected his ball handling either. Billy feeds into Tatum. The goose works around and scores on a jumping pivot shot. The Celtics weave back toward the Globetrotters basket. Carsten sees an opening. Sets, shoots, and it's good. Move up, babe. Move, move. Closer, closer. Move, babe. Move. Stay with him. Stay with him. I told you to stay with him, babe. third quarter, and for late tuners in, this has been a ding-dong battle all night. Presley with the ball. And the babe ties it up at 43-all. 
Down the court go the Celtics in this ding-dong ball game. Townsend takes the ball. Alert defensive play by Billy. He's been the ball-handling spark plug of the Trotters, directing almost every play. Loose with the ball. Maneuvers away. Now Pop Gates tries a set shot. Swish. It's good. Trotters move ahead again. 45-43. Celtics come right back, trying desperately to work that ball in close. Can't quite get in there. It's Baker on a sharp dribble. Oh, Baker makes a wonderful, impossible shot. Look backwards over his head. That was a honey, and this is basketball. Got a hand to those trotters. They're a cool bunch, even with the pressure of this game. They find time to a cloud. Now Haynes whipping the ball into Tatum and back again. Once more, Goose scoring on a hook shot. That's 18 points so far tonight for the Goose. He's been deadly on those hooks. Bob Hahn is Celtic counterpart getting into position, and he's been dropping them in the two. And there's another by Bob. Longest lead of the evening has been three points. Haynes slips, and the Celtics recover. Hahn moving into the key spot once again. Ball is outside the defense. Now Hahn has it, tries a jump shot. Townsend grabs the rebound. But there's a whistle on the play. Ball is against Hahn, pushing. Wonder how Townsend's knee is standing up under this punishment. It seems to be full of fight. But there's 12 minutes left to play, and that can be a lifetime in a basketball game. Townsend sets, shoots, swish, it's good. Celtics come down again, slowly at first, and now on a fast break. Two men against one, Billy Townsend defending. Once again, he comes up with that ball. Mark Haynes is off on one of his fantastic dribbling exhibitions. Look at that. Haynes still maneuvering. Backwards, driving in. And the set shot, it's good. The Trotters now lead by three points with the third quarter. Fast running out. It's Hahn again with a layup. And Hahn scores from under the bucket. This game has been hard fought, but clean. Boy, there's some beautiful ball handling. And Townsend gets up to score. And timeout, New York Celtics with less than two minutes remaining. Players need this time out. The pace has been fantastic. How much time left? A minute 15 seconds. How's the knee? Great. Never felt better. <laughs> Just don't feed to me on the right. I'll yank you if it feels bad. Don't yank me. I'm all right. Win or lose, Billy, you played a great game. What do you mean, lose? We got this game on ice. Let's go. Time in again, and the Celtics take the ball out. Moving down the court now, and Townsend bats it away, but the Celtics recover. Trotters and Celtics fighting for that ball now. And a shot, and they fight for that rebound. The ball rolls around the rim, drops down. They tap it in. It's good. Trotters now lead by only one point. Haynes dribbling up the court. Passes quickly to Billy Townsend, who tries a leaping layup, which misses. 48 seconds to go. The Celtics in possession, that ball. Baker trying that one-hand jump shot again. The ball is up and good. Celtics lead with 33 seconds to go. Townsend is racing down the right sideline, waving frantically for the ball. He gets it, scores on a leaping driving game. 16 seconds left to play, and the Celtics come back. It's Baker once again, hot as a pistol, shooting from midcourt, and good once more. And the Celtics out in front now. Haynes taking the ball out, eight seconds to go. Everyone at the garden is on his feet. Celtics are pressing all over the court. Townsend racing down the right sideline. Haynes passes to him, five seconds, four seconds. He leaps, shoots, good! The gun goes off and the game is over. The Globetrotters win it! And what a night it was for Townsend. You better get dressed, darling. We've only got an hour to make the train. What train? To Baltimore. It's the only place that I know that you can earn your degree by teaching. If we need more money, I can always go back to work. <laughs> well, what's so funny? You, deciding all this by yourself. Well, I suppose I did forget to mention it to you. But I've been thinking about it for hours. Hey, come here. <laughs> Oh, hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 Hi.
home? I say, what? Oh, we'll see. Hey, what's your name? Hi, kid. We just ran into Dave Barrett of the Rams. That last shot you took was a pretty expensive one. Oh, forget it, fellas. I got my money's worth. Well, I think you know how we feel. Tell him, Goose. We thought you might like a souvenir, Professor. This is the ball we used in the game last night. We've all signed it. Gee, thanks. <laughs> Watch my house there. What is it? Watch my house.